So in this video, I'm going to show you a way that I've learned to kill off pretty much any nuisance plant. We have about a two acre yard and most of it is woods. And right along the perimeter of where the grass stops and the wood starts, there are some really nasty things out there. Or at least there were last year until I was able to kill most of it off successfully with what I'm about to show you. There were these really nasty pricker plants that would grow blackberries. Every time you'd walk through them, they'd just totally rip your legs up. And we've got these other new ones that have popped up this year. So now I'm about to kill those. This product I'm gonna show you, it's called Brush Tox. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take this stuff and mix it with four gallons of water. So we're gonna dilute it a lot. It's fairly easy to use if you have the right equipment for it. And I think actually, if you really had the time, another way you could do this instead of what I'm about to show you, is like literally snip off the stems of what you're trying to kill and take this stuff without diluting it, like with a paintbrush and paint it on the stem. And it would basically do the same thing. But what we're gonna do here just allows us to cover a much larger area a lot faster. And we're just gonna spray it right on the green leaves of the plant. And you sort of have to do this. I mean, it can be done really anytime in the, in the summer or spring or even the fall but you can't do it much later than October, in Michigan anyway, where I'm at, because the leaves are gonna fall off and then you're not gonna be able to get it on the leaves anymore. So it's important that the leaves are there because once it absorbs it through the leaves, it's then going to distribute that poison like down into the roots. This is a lot more effective than trying to dig it up or snip it or trying to get the roots some other way because it's very easy to miss parts of the root and then it's gonna come back. But this will basically just make sure that as long as it gets in through the, the leaves, it'll go down and kill the whole thing. And just so you know, I'm definitely not a professional botanist or a chemist, and uh, I'm really just an uh, average homeowner here. Don't take this as any kind of like scientific advice. I'm really just telling you this was what worked for me, and I tried a lot of different stuff before I finally landed on this. So let me show you what else I'm using to do this. I'm gonna turn the camera around quick. So this right here is the backpack sprayer that I have. I got this thing on Amazon. This is actually like perfect for my yard, which again is two acres, mostly of woods. I ended up basically going through exactly this amount and this is a four gallon thing. So this is good for me. If you have a smaller yard, then you probably don't need something this big. If you have a bigger yard, then you might be able to use this and just fill it up a few times. So this is actually like an electric powered backpack. And once we turn this thing on, it'll make a little bit of noise, which basically just keeps the fluids flowing through this tube and then out of this little wand and nozzle here. And this is what we use to spray it all over the place. And this is the product that I'm using. It was about 50 bucks, I think, for this. Kind of goes without saying, but this stuff is highly, highly toxic. So don't get any of it on your skin. Wear protective clothing, wear a mask. And anything you put it on, expect that thing to die. And so it also goes without saying, try not to get this on the leaves of anything you don't want to kill. I think if you do accidentally get this on the bark of a tree, it's not going to kill that, especially if it's diluted the way that I'm going to do it. But uh, just be careful with what you're spraying and definitely don't spray yourself. So this is the type of weed that has grown in this year and uh, filled in a lot of the space where those nasty pricker bushes used to be. And it's got these berries on here that are poisonous, which is not ideal for our dog who eats pretty much anything or our two children here. So that's why I'm trying to kill these things. And uh, you can just see them all over the place. And these things are really hard to get rid of any other way because it's really hard to uproot them because the stems snap so easily and then they just grow right back. And we've also got a lot of these weeds all over our yard this year. These are not as much of a nuisance because they don't have thorns. They're just not as big of a problem, but still I don't really want them there. So I'm gonna take those things out. And then this right here was the original original culprit from last year and I actually killed off probably like 95% of these things in our yard and as you can see these little thorn things right here are just horrible they made me bleed and my kids bleed every time we were walking out here and that's why I wanted to get rid of those things because they were just not fun to have around and again this method I'm going to show you was definitely effective last year but the funny thing is the only reason these ones are still here is because this is about the place in our yard when I ran out of the poison last year. And that's why this one is still here and there's a few others over there. So that's why I'm finishing the job this year. So these should all be gone and then hopefully the other ones that I'm going to take out as well. All right, so one thing I want to warn you about because I made this mistake last year is to not overfill this thing, which is pretty easy to do. What I did last year was I opened up, I think it was this one, and I filled it up all the way to the top and I didn't leave enough room 
for this stuff. And so when I put this stuff in there and then put the top on, I thought everything was fine. But then when I put this thing on my back, it started leaking all over the place and all over me. And then I had to go quick take a shower to get all that stuff off my skin. So I think what I'm gonna do this time around is fill this up halfway and then use half of this just to make sure there's not too much in there. And then when I run out, I'm just gonna come back and fill it back up and do it all over again. If you have any doubts about how full your thing ought to be, uh, that might be one way you can handle it too. All right, so if you look in there, you can sort of see these lines. I believe those are like the one gallon and then the two gallon lines. So I'm gonna fill it up to that second line and then I'm gonna put half of the brush tox solution in there and then go from there. All right, so here we go, filling it up. All right, so there we go. It's about uh, right up to that second line. Now, another thing I'll say is that I had a little bit of trouble getting this wand situated correctly. And when I was using this thing last year, I found that this top half kept flying off and then I'd have to put everything down and then put it back on and then it would fly off again. So I was clearly doing something wrong and I realized I didn't have it uh, fastened in here correctly. So what I'm gonna do this year is put this thing on and turn it on and just test it out before I have any of the brush tox solution in there and just make sure it's working correctly. And then once I know that this thing is on there correctly, then I'm going to put the solution in and get started. So I'm gonna quick do that. All right, so we're gonna turn this knob, turn this thing on just like that and you can hear the noise going. Now one interesting thing I'm seeing here is that we've got a little bit of a leak going on. So, obviously I want to fix that leak before I have the solution in here and uh, there's poisonous water flying all over the place. So I'm gonna quick fix that and put some plumber's tape on there and then we'll uh, test it again and see if it works. So let's start with this. And uh, it actually feels like it's loose. So it might just be as simple as tightening this thing up a little bit better. And I should probably put some tape in there just to be sure. But let's try it one more time. Turn this back on. Okay, so I've got it turned back on and we can see this is working correctly. It's just about how it should go. And we've got uh, no more leaking coming from here. So that's good. Even when I stop it, there's no leaking. So that's what we wanna see. Yeah, it's good to go. So let's get started. All right, so for what I'm trying to do, this is supposed to be diluted with four gallons of water. So now that I have roughly two gallons in there, my goal is to use half of this. So we're probably getting down to like the 32 line. I'm just gonna put half of this in there and once it's in, we will uh, keep going on to the next step. Go ahead and dump this in here like so. You can see how it kind of looks in there. Just like that see where we're at yep that's about half so we're all set put this thing back in there and then put this top on and then turn it on and get to work all right so at this point I'm just looking for any of the plants that I know I want to kill and I'm spraying them just like this and that's pretty much it and then this will uh, absorb that stuff through the leaves over the next week or two and uh, they should probably never come back after that. So let's go ahead and get the rest of these things. You just wanna thoroughly coat the leaves of everything we wanna kill. And we got a bunch of these things over here. Now in this case, I've got a tree right here that I do not want to kill, but I do have these leaves over here. So I just gotta be careful not to get the tree, but to get these weeds only. Go ahead and do these. Now you notice I'm getting this trunk and that's okay because this is not nearly enough poison to kill a tree, especially if it's on the trunk. If we were to get all the leaves way up there, then maybe that would do some damage, but that's obviously not something we can reach. So I'm not too worried about that. Now this is another example where we've got this tree up here that I do not want to hurt, but I do want to uh, kill these things down here. So I just gotta be careful not to hit those tree leaves. Okay, now we're back to the spot where I ran out of this stuff last year, so we're gonna finish the job right now. Go get these guys over here. All right, so we've gotten through the first half a tank, so we're gonna fill it back up until about halfway again. 
pour the rest in here. There we go. And I did budget this out pretty well because the back half of my yard is pretty well covered now. I'm gonna do the front half and I've got half a tank left. So let's go get it. So when you're walking out in the woods like I am, just spraying all kinds of stuff that you want to get rid of, it can actually be kind of easy to forget which areas you've already covered. One way to tell is to look at the leaves and you'll just notice like a little bit more of a shine to them. And that's because it's coated with this brush talk stuff. And also one other thing to keep in mind is that you don't want to be doing this when you know there's rain in the forecast because you want this poison to sit on the leaves and get into the system of the plant. And if the rain comes and washes it all away, like that afternoon, then it's not really going to do its job. So if you're doing this someplace where it rains a lot, just try to plant it for a time when there's no rain in the foreseeable future. And if there's a light breeze for you, like there is for me today, uh, try to spray this in a direction so that it's not blowing back in your face. Because uh, like I said earlier, you don't want to get this stuff on your skin. You definitely don't want to breathe it in either. Cool thing is, some of these areas here were just full of these pricker bushes last year and this year they are all gone like this entire area was just absolutely saturated with them you couldn't even walk through it without ripping up your legs this brush tox took care of it all so it works hey guys seth coming back here at you so this is monday tuesday Wednesday. so this is three days after i sprayed everything kind of get a good look at how they're looking now you'll notice that the leaves are wilting a bit and that's pretty much exactly what you want to see this particular plant was like a true weed i'm going to show you some of the other plants i sprayed we'll see how those are looking okay so this was the other type of plant that i was trying to fully exterminate and i'm seeing some mixed results here you'll notice that this one right here the leaves are looking like really wilted like this thing is well on its way to the grave however this one over here i sprayed just the same and the leaves are looking a little bit different, but not that much. So I'm not really sure why that is. I'm assuming it's just going to take a little bit more time for these things to, you know, wither up and die. I do know from my experience of last year, especially with this particular type of plant, that the brush tox should definitely be the end of it. And I'll also say one thing I didn't expect uh, was it rained about 24 hours after I sprayed all these things. And that's not ideal, though I don't know if that's going to ruin anything necessarily. I'm hoping 24 hours was enough time for that poison to get into the roots. But uh, I guess we'll find out later this year or next spring when they do or don't come back up. Okay, so I actually decided to give it a little bit more time. I'm back out here now at the site. It's been exactly one week. And you can see that this plant that I wasn't totally sure if it was going to die, well, it died and it's completely dead and totally wiped out. At this point, all I have to do is just snip off the stem from the very base of the plant and let it fall to the ground and it will get covered with leaves and I will never see this thing again. Or I could just not snip it and let nature do its thing as it falls down to the ground that way. But in this particular case, my whole issue with this plant is the fact that the thorns are there and they cut our legs when we walk through it. So that's why I'm probably going to just snip these so that they're not sticking up and catching our pants and legs when we walk through. But anyway, just wanted to follow up and confirm that it definitely worked again this year. Totally killed these things off. Even with the rain that came 24 hours after I sprayed these things, it still was enough to totally take these things out. This video is not in any way sponsored by Brush Tox or the Petra company that makes these backpack sprayers. I'm not trying to promote them or anything. I'm just telling you this is what I use and this is what worked for me. So if you find some other product that works great for you, wish all the best. Just wanted to let anybody else out there know who's dealing with these kind of nuisance plants. This is one a pretty solid way to get rid of them. Just be careful with the chemicals and how you handle them. There's a pretty good chance if you have any kind of woody plant, this will uh, knock it out for you. So, good luck.